beautiful shoreline. As I tell my colleagues on both coasts all the time, we have the most beautiful shoreline right here in the city of Toronto in Etobicoke Lakeshore, about 100 yards that way. So it's too bad. We can go out and take a look around. The weather's unfortunately not that good, but another time perhaps, and you'll, you'll agree with me. The last time I had a, a member here from Halifax, the next day he got home, he's sending me pictures of the waterfront from Halifax. So <laughs> I, think I, I think I struck a nerve, so the ministry may be doing, doing the same. Um, look. I was elected in 2015 alongside Minister Fraser. I've got a long list of things I'm supposed to say about him, but I'm just going to speak from the heart. I get to work with a lot of really incredible people. Uh, Minister Fraser, he, he's a lawyer. Um, he's a, a brilliant man. He went to a small university, he went to St. Evac, so I went to Bishop's University, two beautiful campuses, principal, but it, they pale in comparison to a Humber College campus. This place is truly remarkable. Um, but the most important thing you need to know about the minister is he is truly a good person. He's the minister of immigration, citizenship, refugees. It is one of the toughest jobs in the government of Canada. Uh, as great as we are at welcoming Canadian people to Canada, it comes with a lot of challenges. And not a day goes by when he's not walking down the halls and he sees me or one of my colleagues looking at him and he knows there's, a, there's an ask coming. I've got a constituent, I've got a problem. And most people would see the, you know, turn to the nearest door and duck out, he doesn't. He stands there, he listens to you, and he responds to you, and he helps you. He does it with grace, with dignity. Um, he's a remarkable individual, as I said. He's a great minister, but most importantly, he's a really, really good person, and that's why he's so good at the job. And we're incredibly lucky to have you here today, and I just want to say thank you for joining us. So please come on up and join us. We have a very special announcement today. I'm not going to tip my hat, but I know it's with respect to your department. I mean, here in Etobicoke Lakeshore, we're proud of our diversity. We have Ontario's largest Ukrainian community. We have Ontario's largest Tibetan community. We have one of Ontario's largest Polish communities. If you want to talk about a multicultural community, you're looking at it right here in Etobicoke Lakeshore. So thank you for joining us. Um, look, thanks so much for the uh, kind introduction, uh, uh, James. Everybody's favorite Irishman on St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Paddy's, everybody. Um, before I get underway, I should actually acknowledge uh, James' work uh, on establishing Ir Irish Heritage Month in Canada as a result of a, a private member's bill he advanced over the past few years. Uh, and to have that acknowledged, given uh, though I'm predominantly Scottish, something we share in common, uh, I, I think today of all days you deserve uh, a congratulations. And, and just on the, uh, the rivalry between our, our shorelines, um, uh, I can't help but point out that uh, it's pretty cute that you guys have an aquarium here. Um, <laughs> We, we've actually got whales in my constituency, James. <laughs> so, um, look, uh, thank you so much. C'est un plaisir d'être ici avec vous avec vous aujourd'hui. Gwe Nindelwisi, Sean Fraser, well, those who go to the in the Guayanuk. I come from uh, uh, Mi'kma'ki. I'm so pleased to be here uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, James's community and here in particular uh, on site at uh, Humber College. Uh, this is an extraordinary institute. And having had the opportunity to engage with uh, students, with faculty and staff, uh, in particular with the crew that you see standing behind me here today, uh, gives me faith that uh, Canada is producing extraordinary graduates. They're going to make a meaningful difference to our economic and social well-being, not just in the short term while they're here to study, uh, but in the long term as more people uh, transition to permanent residency. You know, it's important, uh, before we get into the details of today's announcement, to reflect on the importance of immigration to Canada. Uh, I think it's very appropriate that we begin with a land acknowledgement, uh, but we should also recognize, with the exception of Indigenous communities, uh, everyone else who finds himself uh, in this country today uh, came from somewhere else. Uh, the opening chapter of their family history was written by a migrant. Uh, like the principal of the Lakeshore campus, uh, part of my family, uh, the majority of my family, uh, arrived uh, on a vessel from Scotland about 250 years ago, not 10 minutes uh, from where I live today. Uh, the reality is whether it was Scottish settlers in Nova Scotia 250 years ago, uh, or more recently uh, Syrians, Afghans, Ukrainians who've come fleeing war or persecution in recent years, uh, every community in this country is represented by different diaspora communities who found themselves here to uh, seek opportunity for themselves or their family, to be reunited with loved ones, uh, or to flee challenging circumstances that were beyond their control. Uh, whatever the reason, uh, they make up the Canada that we know and that we love today, and we should be proud of our history because it creates enormous opportunities and an enormous competitive advantage for Canada to continue to be one of the most welcoming uh, countries on earth. 
Um, my view is that Canada needs to continue to increase its ambition uh, when it comes to immigration. We need to continue to welcome more people for economic reasons and for demographic reasons. Um, it doesn't take uh, uh, a labour force statistics specialist to understand uh, that we need more workers in this country. Uh, go down Main Street uh, of any community and you're going to see help wanted signs hanging in the window. Uh, the reality is that the Canadian economy has had uh, the strongest uh, economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic of any developed economy. Uh, we've now seen GDP well in excess of pre-pandemic levels. There's more than 800,000 people working in this country today than were working before the pandemic. Uh, at the same time, we've seen uh, a record low level of unemployment this summer and we're more or less at that level today. Uh, despite these economic successes, uh, we still have employers who are having difficult times finding a job. Uh, finding workers to fill essential jobs and in the long term we have predictable skills gap in essential sectors in our, our economy that will demand we continue to recruit talented people from around the world to help make a difference here at home. Uh, it's it particularly encouraging when we have the opportunity to work with uh, international students. Uh, international students not only help make a short-term uh, economic contribution, uh, they help fill those long-term skills gaps. Uh, the International Student Program contributes many billions of dollars to the Canadian economy each year, uh, but more than that, will strengthen the social fabric of our, our country for many years to come. Uh, in particular, when we're welcoming, pe welcoming people who tend to be younger when they arrive in Canada and transition to permanent residency, uh, it can help overcome a very challenging demographic trend that we have in Canada. Uh, you know, I come from uh, Atlantic Canada, where we have an aging population. And I've seen firsthand the challenges of having uh, people age in community while young people move away to seek economic opportunity. Le Canada est également confronté à des défis démographiques. Il y a 50 ans, lorsque nos systèmes de soins de santé et de pensions ont été conçus, nous avions sept travailleurs pour soutenir une retraitée. Aujourd'hui, nous n'avons plus que trois travailleurs pour une retraitée. Et l'on s'attend de ce qu'il n'est plus que deux dans les décennies à venir. Uh, this is frightening stuff, folks, and I don't raise uh, these challenges about the future demographic trajectory that we're on uh, as some uh, fictional threat in the future. This is something I've seen in my own community. Uh, when I first ran for office seven years ago, some of the controversial local issues included the loss of a local elementary school because so many families were leaving the part of the world that I grew up in, which I'm sure you'll appreciate very well coming from the same coast. Uh, we also saw the closure of the mental health unit at the largest regional hospital in my community because one psychiatrist moved to pursue opportunities elsewhere and we couldn't continue to operate the facility safely with the one who remained. When you don't continue to attract people but see them leave your community, uh, the consequences are extraordinary. Uh, international students in Nova Scotia and across the country are helping change that trajectory, injecting talent but also vitality into communities that were previously at risk of losing essential services as a result of our demographic challenges. Uh, that brings me to uh, today's announcement. Over the course of the pandemic, uh, we've seen particular challenges to Canada's immigration system, which we're working hard to overcome, including uh, with recent graduates who studied here in Canada hoping to apply for permanent residency. Of course, when we closed down the border to protect the public against a deadly virus, the COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic uh, demanded we do so, we saw some unique consequences that we didn't necessarily anticipate back in March of 2020. Uh, what we ended up seeing was applications from around the world continued to come in uh, to Canada at a time when we were not continuing to welcome people to the country in order to protect the public health and prevent the spread of COVID-19 in our communities. When the borders opened back up, uh, we had a few years worth of applications in the system. One of the unique impacts that this has had as we transition to a strategy to uh, settle people in Canada with permanent residency who were already here uh, was that the average score with so many applications uh, in the system was much higher than was normally the case. And people who had completed their studies and were on a postgraduate work permit had a harder time qualifying for permanent residency, not because they didn't have the skills necessary to qualify, but because so many applicants were in the system, those who certainly would have qualified previously didn't have the same opportunity. We want to continue to hang on to that talent in Canada, not just to fill gaps in the short term in the labour force, but to ensure that we're meeting the long-term needs of the economy by continuing to have skilled workers who are educated in Canada here making a difference. I'm happy to announce a new initiative that offers post-graduation work, post-graduate work permit holders an opportunity to gain additional work experience. This initiative will be open to post-graduate work permit holders with expired or expiring temporary status in Canada, and it will allow them to stay longer in Canada and continue to work in Canada.
Former international students whose postgraduate work permit expires in the year 2023 will qualify for an additional or extended work permit of up to 18 months. Those who were eligible for the 2022 postgraduate work permit extension will also be uh, qualified for this new measure. Beginning on April 6th, postgraduate work permit holders who are eligible for a simple, simplified, faster process to extend their work permit can opt in using the uh, IRCC secure account on our website. Uh, for those who apply, they will receive by email an interim work authorization, which they can affix to an expired postgraduate work permit that will enable them to work in Canada and will have 18 months to remain in Canada and continue to work and apply for permanent residency after they receive that work permit. Former international students uh, who've had uh, their work permit apply, uh, expire will also be able to apply for this new open work permit. They'll also be able to restore their status even if they are beyond the 90-day restoration period and they will receive as well the interim work authorization that I've just described. Les étudiants étrangers, uh, diplômés talentueux et qualifiés jouent un rôle essentiel dans la lutte contre la pénurie de main-d'oeuvre du Canada et ceux qui approchent de la fin de leur permis de travail post-diplôme sont déjà bien intégrés au marché du travail canadien. The additional work permit will allow former international students to continue contributing to the Canadian economy while they gain valuable work experience, which will allow them to improve their chances at qualifying for permanent residency through the express entry system and potentially be invited to remain in Canada permanently. Uh, folks, this is not uh, some uh, fictional uh, uh, rule that will only apply on, uh, within the system at IRCC. This has a real impact on real people who are in our communities. And I hope, Salve, you don't mind me sharing. During a conversation that we had before we attended the announcement, Salve shared with me, uh, she was a licensed architect in the Philippines. She has 10 years experience uh, working in home construction. In fact, is working for a home building company here in the city now. Without this change, the postgraduate work permit that Salve has benefited from would have expired in August, and we would not have been able to retain talent in one of the sectors that it is in greatest demand in our economy, building homes. I don't need to tell anybody that lives in the GTA that we need more people who can build homes. This is the, the most response I've gotten from the crowd so far. Uh, the reality is with this new measure, people who are here uh, that are facing an expired uh, work permit are going to be able to stay and continue to make a difference where they are most needed. I want to say thank you to everyone who's joined us here today. Uh, and I want to say thank you for the patience of those who are in a situation that has caused serious stress for people who are worried about their future and ability to remain in Canada. I hope you take today as a sign of good faith that Canada wants to continue to have you live here, continue to have you work here, and to benefit from your contribution to our economy and more importantly to our communities in the generations to come. With that, I want to say thank you and I'll invite Gina Antonacci to share a few remarks on behalf of the, uh, the college here. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Minister Fraser. This is very exciting news, and as you said, it will have a tremendous impact on our students, many of whom are in the room today. And we do have students here today from Humber's North Campus, Lakeshore Campus, and our International Graduate School. And they did enjoy speaking with you today, and you listened to them, and we are truly grateful for that, so thank you. You know, our international students bring a wealth of perspective and lived experiences that enrich the teaching and learning environment here at Han at Humber, and we all benefit from that here at Humber as well as throughout Canada. At Humber, we're focused on preparing our graduates to be career-ready global citizens, and the contributions and innovative approaches of over 9,000 international students from over 120 countries who attend Humber contributes to this greatly. The announcement today will mean that students from all over the world will be able to stay in Canada longer after their graduation to work and contribute their knowledge and expertise to our economy. This will have a big impact on graduates' ability to set up their careers and build their lives in Canada, many of whom, as I've said, are here today and evidence of what we can expect. So thank you again, Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gina Antonucci. My name is Andre.